Hello friends, welcome back. I'm Ben with Coldwell Banker Sea Realtors. I'm Kerry Nikolai's licensed assistant. Today we're gonna to be delving into ice dams, taking care of your roof, and increasing the insulation up in your attic. Why it's good, why you might want more insulation, and kind of evaluating what you have currently. So stick around, this should be fun. Of course, you know, we chose one of the coldest weeks of the year to do the project, but at least it's better than the summertime. I shouldn't be sweating as much. So welcome to the garage workshop. Right now we're staging a bunch of R30 insulation. And the, uh, the thing is when we bought our house here a few months ago, we knew it was gonna be a fixer upper. We knew we were gonna have some things to, well, build upon. And now that we're in the middle of winter right now, it's the end of January, we've certainly realized that ice dams are a big thing that we need to work on. A few quick tips when working with insulation, you wanna take some precautions. It is spun glass fibers, and it's not something you wanna get into your lungs. So definitely wearing a mask is appropriate for this. One of the reasons why it's so itchy when you get on your skin is that the spun glass fibers actually get into the pores of your skin. So a couple things you can do to combat that is obviously wear long sleeves, wear gloves, long pants and whatnot, cover yourself up as much as possible. And if you want to get a Tyvek suit, I know they sell those. So that'll be uh, keeping your clothes a little bit cleaner. But you can also do things like suntan lotion spray, the, the spray suntan control. And that'll actually create somewhat of a barrier and fill in the open pores a little bit. So the fiberglass has less of a chance to get in there and really get an irritating hold on you. This year we seem to have uh, decided it was a good idea to do an insulation project one of the coldest weeks of the year. So um, I believe it's 10 degrees right now, middle of the day, nice and sunshiny. This will be fun. All right, so let's start at the beginning, as all good stories do. When we purchased our new house here, we knew that there was going to be some updates and repairs needed. One of the biggest ones is that a house constructed in the mid-1960s is a little deficient on building construction even though it was modern at the time we now understand that adding more insulation up in the attic space has a lot of benefits and insulation technology has just grown by leaps and bounds in the last 50 years one of the problems that we noticed is the joist space was adequately filled at the time of construction with insulation, but over time it has collapsed, as insulation often does. We do have fiberglass insulation currently up in the attic, but it's become inadequate. Now there's a couple ways that we can see that on the exterior of the house. Looking at the roof, we notice that the eaves up in a, a, about three or four feet still has snow when the rest of the roof does not. That means all of the heat from inside the house is getting up through that blanket of insulation and actually prematurely melting the snow up at the top part of the roof. I'll show some pictures of, of the north side of the house and you can actually see uh, there's very much a difference, the cold portion versus the warm portion of the roof line. <clears throat> now, this is dangerous because that tends to melt the snow from underneath. When that happens, that liquid flows down towards the edge of the roof, encountering a colder layer, which then refreezes it, creating a dam of ice. Now that continues to happen, more melting snow underneath that cap, and now it doesn't have anywhere to go because it has encountered that dam of ice. 
That's why they call it an ice dam. It'll dam up that water. Eventually the water will work back in under the shingles, damage the underlayment of the roof, degrade the lifespan of the shingles and all of that structure underneath. Could even um, produce situation as far as mold and mildew inside your attic, which is never good. So the biggest way we can help mitigate this is by keeping the warm air inside of the house. Now, I've taken a look at our eaves and we do have adequate um, airflow coming in the eaves. Nice cold air is getting up into the attic and up at the ridge, we do have a nice ridge vent. So I know that air is circulating up inside the attic, which is a good start. If your situation is not that, then you'll need to take extra steps to increase the ventilation getting up into your attic because you want the underside of the roof sheathing to be about the same temperature as the outside air. That way you don't get that um, differential heating underneath and melting of the snow prematurely. We're back about a third of the way through the attic. I think the worst part is just getting to the location. Yeah. So way back there, way back there. Our time attic update. Let the dust settle a little bit. So you can see I got the, uh, the back half of the house done. We're working around and it's not too bad. The, uh, the big part is getting <clears throat> things kind of close to the uh, the rafters without getting the rafters blocked off. So you still got good airflow. So I've got these new bats as close as I possibly can. Now here's the other thing. We uh, kind of knew this going in. See that right there? Yep, yep. And the, uh, the one back there as well. Well, those are, those are some neat little things. But those are our vents from the bathroom exhaust fans. So they're venting right up into the attic. Not really cool. Uh, this attic does have an exhaust fan up behind me. So it actively pulls out the moist air from the, uh, the attic. We don't see any signs of mold or anything up on the rafters. So that's a project for another day. I have to vent those out properly when we do the rough and new shingles here the next time around. Otherwise, right now we're just gonna cap those off and put the insulation right over the top. All right, guys, that was fun. Project done. Nice fluffy layer of insulation. It's like we'll be living underneath a huge fluffy blanket. Now, the project really wasn't too bad. Um, we used about a thousand feet of or a thousand square feet of insulation for our house and our house is about 1200 square foot so that wasn't too bad <clears throat> uh, cost about twenty dollars a bat so yeah 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 less than a grand so less than a grand and you can create a wonderful warm fuzzy blanket atmosphere and it'll help with the heating bills it'll help with the ice dams it'll just be good all around energy efficiency is definitely the way to go and it only took me a few hours. I think I've only been up here about six and a half hours or so. That's just through the installation, not counting the uh, going to the home center and picking up the, uh, the material. And I tell you, definitely wear a mask and the proper clothing because this is a nasty job. One of those things you want to protect your lungs from the, uh, the glass insulation. Although this corning, they really figured it out well this time. Um, it's not like the old insulation that's super, super scratchy they made these glass fibers a little bit thicker so they don't get embedded into your pores and itch on your skin. But still, I keep them out of your lungs. That's about it for this episode. We'll uh, do some follow-up the next time it snows and see if it actually helps with keeping the, uh, the snow on the roof instead of having it melt off. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a great Central Wisconsin day and we'll catch you on the next one.